All right, we are back. What are we doing? Inspired by? And why? It's been a minute. We're in a new studio, in a new state, and in a new season of... The Lord of the Rings. Rings of Power. Rings of Power. Yeah, Lord of the Rings, the Rings of Power. I liked it a lot. I want to speak about the music because when High King Gilgad thinks that the elves are going to have to get out of Middle Earth and he's doing this farewell gathering to let everybody know we got to go, he has this beautiful solo. And we didn't know if the actor who played him, Benjamin Walker, was the one who sang, but whoever did just bodied that singing. It's beautiful, mournful solo a cappella and conveying all that sense of loss. And people think they're not only leaving a place they've called home, but they're leaving others behind who will be harmed. Right. It just really captured it. Ah, beautiful stuff. It's good. And, and also the, um, I mean, the, uh, it, just, it just also reminds me of the uh, shows like this. They have, they have people who write the language for, yeah. for, these, mm -hmm. for these different, you know, alien races or, you know, different worlds. Yeah, Tolkien, I think, created something for this. Oh, okay. This was an original yeah, language. Yeah, I'm, I'm that pretty he, sure it's one of wrote. the things. Okay. So I he's like the, one of the like godfathers of when you're going to do fantasy, go deep, make right. a language, right, do a right, whole right, thing. Right. Okay. Uh, yeah. Okay. Cool. I, I didn't. I didn't realize that he had created that because there was a lot of, you know, like, I, like I, I was thinking like he might have you know done some words or some you know places or you know like for the language, but I didn't know he created the, the whole language. But um, I'm not saying that people yeah. didn't fill something in. It's just that I think he's known to be one who people right. just want to emulate right. in terms of oh, thorough world building. Absolutely. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and so you like the language. So when mm -hmm. Elrond and Galadriel, for instance, are having their conflict about what should be done with the rings once they know Sauron has been influencing their creation, uh, they used bits of elven language to sort of punctuate things and say, like, that's our home language. Like when mm -hmm. you get really intense, yeah. your home accent comes out or you go to your mother language yeah. to say it. And it yeah. was like, okay. So we got a little bit of uh, reference here pulled up. A friendly old Wikipedia saying that there were languages constructed by J.R.R. Tolkien. He created a large family of Elvish languages. Got so okay, cool. there are many. And, and again, just in reading, I was telling you that I've been reading about the stories. <laughs> I had read years ago some Tolkien, not what is in the Lord of the Rings, Rings of Power. Right. But I do have some familiarity. And I haven't read his work for, for years, and so I was just trying to catch back up on the world building in general yeah, okay. so I could follow along with what's going on. And right. also, when there's action like they have, mm -hmm. I need to look ahead at who's being threatened and what might happen because I'm just worried for everybody. And not, and not except Sauron. I'm not worried for Sauron. <laughs> but he... He was rendered in a way that made you see his journey as not pure evil every second in the season two opener. Right. I thought that was wonderful to have progressed the story, then stop, go back, and give you it from the villain's point of view. Oh, that's a good way to do a season opener because we are familiar with things so you're sort of recapping us even though it's not a recap right but you're giving us stuff that we haven't seen in that light so mm -hmm. well done and i know other stories have done this too but just good use of different uh, strategies to fill out the world and then zoom us forward um since it's been a gap of a, several months since we had season one episodes i'm excited we're going to talk more about the other episodes when we have this conversation, though, we try to talk about the acting, the music, spiritual connection, the writing. I think there's a lot of care about going into good and evil conversations. Like when you're seeing Journey of Sauron from when the orcs um, killed him in the incarnation that mm -hmm. he was in previously, in the body he was in before. And then he has this moment where he gets with a group of people as he's gotten just enough power back to take a human form by murdering people and living things. And he's presented with this person who's trying to say, hey, you can turn your life around. And they're making a pitch to him about, you can choose every day to be good. He absolutely does not choose to be good. But he, <laughs> for a moment, you see him considering. Mm -hmm. That's about as well as you can handle, I think, giving us layers of 
complexity with who's supposed to be evil. Like this is Sauron. This is non-negotiable, like evil. And so for those who have read how Sauron has been written, correct me if I'm wrong, but I think he's not supposed to have a whole lot of great redeeming qualities here. <laughs> so, I don't think so. It's not like wicked me. or anything, you know, it's like, it's not, he's not just misunderstood or, you know, yeah, so. No, and there's a yeah. very understandable logic to his world domination. We've heard this for lots of villains. Let's end all war by everyone being under my control, you know. Yeah. So people can follow that logic and it's not like we haven't had it thrust in our faces as justification for horrible things. Yeah. But I appreciate it taking some time with his journey. As far as the writing yeah. goes, I think people are using the lore that Tolkien presents, mm. taking care with the good and evil that we go to fantasies mm -hmm. to struggle with, and then giving us humanizing, well, not humanizing, but just giving us a connection with the orcs. Mm -hmm. Because they don't want Sauron for leadership. They knew he didn't care about them. They tried to overthrow him a couple times before they stab, stab, stabby, stab, stab. Right. When, so, when somebody says, look, I'm your only choice. They don't, they don't value you. <laughs> they don't value you. They're trying to demean you. That's right, like, right, right. You, you think you just want to live in peace. That's the sort of perspective here. The orcs just want to do their thing. Why do we have to go to war with everybody? We just want to be over here. They'll never accept you. Well, maybe they will. Just like maybe you stop talking for us and maybe we can find some peace. You know, <laughs> right. you, the, you the mouthpiece causing the problems. So that was wonderful to see, to really care about the orc perspective because we're just perceiving orcs in previous tellings of Tolkien's and other people mm -hmm. who write orc-like beings into right. what they do right. as just killing machines. Mm -hmm. Just the, the monster that if somebody just goes and slays a bunch of them, you're not gonna worry. Right. So it can just be quick, like heroic demonstration, you kill this that nobody worries about you killing. Mm -hmm. But no, no, these orcs have families. Right. These orcs have desire to just be at peace in orc life. Like, why, why we gotta be working for y'all? Why can't we just do our thing mm -hmm. <laughs> in orc town, you know? So there is a lot there that's really well done, but we still get to have a big, scary bad who's mostly just bad. Yeah. Good old Sauron. Yeah. Bad old Sauron. But I, I liked that you're making the villain. As people have talked about, there's a, a move toward we don't want to have everyone who's not pretty be the evil one. So now it's like, well, we want sexy villains. So then you can see the appeal. Right. You know, they're right. so shiny yeah. and hey. So, right. so he's in the category of the sexy villain trend. I'm here for it. Like the, Don't uh, mind looking at him. Yeah. Like they, how they talk about you know, the devil. You know, he'll... He'll, he, he doesn't usually come out with horns and a red cape and... <laughs> yeah. Because we know what to look out for. If something right, looks right. scary, the instinct is run away. Right, right, versus right. that's your buddy, right? Right. He's just trying to help you. Mm -hmm. Well done. So I appreciated the singing in that one moment. Yeah, that's good. Yeah, it was truly. And I appreciated the writing using clever ideas for getting us back into the story because you mm -hmm. have a whole lot of Tolkien that you're going to wrestle with if you're dealing any in any kind of depth, you know, if you're going right. through as much as a season or two or maybe more. <laughs> You have a lot to pull from. So that's being well processed for those of us who aren't Tolkien scribes. We're not like scholars of Tolkien. So I liked how um, it felt well balanced between like plot development and action. Um, I remember the, the beginning of the first season, I felt it was dragging like a lot like of people agree a lot of mm -hmm. description and backstory they and had to lay a lot of groundwork and they right. didn't have clever ways to do it without us feeling glugged down like when stuff about to pop off right so Not they figured out better but you know uh but well I just, I just they had a good budget so right you might be able to right <laughs> <laughs> Look, I screenwrite, so you know the struggle is real to put something together in a yeah, way yeah, that yeah. fits what you're really trying to yeah, say, yeah. big questions, big themes, but yeah. also keeps the viewer's interest. This is action fantasy, so we need to see some swords, we need to see some yeah, yeah, yeah. bows and arrows, and right. they're definitely at the end of this episode, teasing quite a bit of action across mm -hmm. this season coming mm -hmm. up, but they also yeah. got the action in. I mean, the scene of the multiple stabbings that were needed to yeah. kill Sauron yeah, in the yeah. early part of this episode, mm -hmm. 
That was a lot of action. Yeah. A lot of violence in that scene. But it was violence that was met with these big ideas. You know, by the time you've gone through the whole groundwork of the previous season and you see how insidious he is, yeah. he's able to slip his way mm -hmm, in. Mm -hmm. You know how effective he is at manipulating the minds of people right. and orcs and creatures just mm -hmm. in general. Yeah, yeah. And so watching him do it and then watching those orcs be smart enough to know you tortured us. You created us to be used by you. You care about us. They're hearing all this and they're like, yeah, okay. Well, you didn't create them. No, yeah, his, uh, his, his boss, the big boss, the big, right. <laughs> Morgoth? I forget what his name is, but yeah. The Dark Lord. Y'all, yeah. the Tolkien lore is best gone into by other folks. Sounds good. Yeah, we don't need to know his whole theology of like, how did all these things get here, but we're right. getting the backstory of at least Sauron was here, then defeated, then come back. And so that was very interesting to watch. Yeah. For, for you, I would like you to have a chance to speak on more of what you want to speak on. Because I think with the writing, people were critiquing, I think, the pace of this. Not, you weren't the only one critiquing the pace of season one early on. Mm -hmm. That's why I fell away from watching it, I think. Then everything's up and going. Battles, torture, murder, all kinds of stuff happening. We're really still making time, though, to juggle the action with character development, but also grappling with the big themes. Love that. I think it was really well done, especially, so the, um, the theme. and the elves, especially with the elves, because they've been corrupted by Sauron's presence. And so you get to see that fallout and they're aware of it. They're bickering and aware that they're having tension and that Sauron's whole aim. Uh, and, you're talking about the big theme. So the theme I was focusing on uh, with regards to spirituality is uh, sacrifice. Um, oh, okay. Let me think for a moment. Of, Who are you talking of, about? Lots of instances of sacrifice. Um, you know, whether it's... Uh, I, my uh, aptitude for names eludes me here. So, That's why um, we have resources, so you can click right, around. Right, right, right. Um, uh, the guy who's trying to get rid of the rings. Um, okay, so you're talking about Elrond. Elrond, yes. Because yes, yes. I think it was Celebrimborn who made the rings. Right, right. But Elrond, Elrond is this friend of Galadriel. Right, right. And he was trying to get rid of the rings because once he realizes that Sauron once was involved. Galadriel in... told him. Right, right. That's the other thing is Galadriel brought this guy in who ends mm -hmm. up being Sauron. But once she figured it out, she was like, don't deal with him. Right. <laughs> and where those rings, by the way, because. Right. Uh. So, yeah, so he's, you know, not wanting to take the chance that they're polluted with evil and, you know, wants to get rid of them. Um, you know, willing to sacrifice. Yeah. So much. Because the not high only king. himself, but, you know. His friendships and the, fa the community, the elven community. Right, right. And, uh eventually all of middle earth you know <laughs> if because... well they go down either way in his mind because he's thinking we got to fight back but we can't use the enemy's tools right. because they'll probably play into the enemy's ends right and so he's thinking okay well if but we otherwise have... the, the elves would have to leave leaving middle earth vulnerable yeah so yeah and i gotta say that's the part that seemed pretty obvious that that was going to be a central thing to struggle with and i right. guess i needed a little less time on that because it was just an obvious point of like do you use this tool that you know right. is powerful right. when it can get out of hand right and it was just a very clearly presented point right. and so i didn't need as much time with it but y'all may have appreciated it that was just the only place where i was like get back to the murders and the <laughs> actions and the moving the plot forward and i appreciated moving the plot forward with the stranger and our friendly Harfoots, um, that was, I, I didn't find that to be a departure that I didn't want. I wanted to not lose track of them. So they're in, they've now managed to get to Rune. So I don't think I just need a bloodbath all the time. It's just that I felt like when some themes are so well explored, I don't yeah. need them to be explored so very much. You're talking about the rune. Yeah, yeah. went there toward the end. No? So okay. what we're doing here is talking about the highlights. What we're doing here is trying to get through a chat about this. And 
inspired by, I'm going to be writing movies. And the next project I'm going to work on is not actually going to be fantasy, but I am going to revisit one of the fantasy scripts that I wrote. So when I'm thinking about this, I'm loving the action. That's one of the things I'm inspired with this is to pull more action sequences in. They're unafraid to do that here and just you have visceral, very realistic action and then magical bursts. And the magical bursts don't feel like fairies and elves. I mean, there are elves, but the magical bursts feel in your face, like magic requires, like they said, any creation requires some sacrifice. People also in other stories say, you know, magic requires sacrifice. Mm -hmm. So that's what I'm inspired to do with my own work is see if I can put some more action in. So the stranger, Nori, and another friend of hers uh, from the, the Harfoot community are finally making it to Rune where the stranger is thinking that he's going to uh, probably recover some sense of who he is. It just He's still trying to find his way. What a gripping thing to have so much power and not know what it's for exactly mm -hmm. and who you are in relation to that power. Are you wielding it for good or evil? Right. It's such a fantastic character they've got mm -hmm. there yeah there's absolutely. a lot there absolutely. play but i don't think they lost track i think we didn't get anything from the dwarves right now but that right. was fine yeah because yeah. we're talking about these big powers coming together and right, right now we need to see the stranger because he's another big factor mm -hmm. and then they they decided to you know center in where they did i thought that was really well done yeah. I'm I'm just I'm in you guys like I think it did its job it's like hey get back into this world Absolutely. and I'm like there's two more episodes that are already out when can we watch them so yeah yeah yeah, yeah. it's it's sort of uh yeah I'm I'm finally sort of well not finally I mean half halfway through the other season I started getting into it but you know it's 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 nice to have a good a good jump to the season that's uh pulling me in so it's good they did that they did that well done <laughs> I know folks who are Tolkien enthusiasts will have a lot of commentary about what are they expecting? Like there's some really well-known characters from the Tolkien universe that are coming up in this season and they have been shown in the little end of the premiere here for season two to tease out what's coming. And I'm sure there are people cheering saying, yeah, you know, Tom Bombadil, hey, hey, he's coming. I am just reading about things just so I can talk about them a little bit more intelligently in terms of when we were saying, oh, that one, people will know what we're meaning. So I really don't have a dog in the fight. I just want to be interested in whoever they present. And I want there to be enough use of the action to keep us like on edge. Because mm -hmm. when there's so many stakes and there's so much good versus evil, really having people go through it and be in a dark tone space is is moving i also just wanted to point out that um i i just remembered this that the um the actor who was um inviting sauron onto the boat you know he's like you can choose good oh or evil, you know, yeah yeah we we're talking boat. about that yeah. um he jumped out at me as his acting was really good so good the writing for him was so good yeah yeah and it's just you know he's this so good. you know there are no small parts only small actors right no like, that was a pivotal it, thing yeah he, it was. he actually it was. gave you a pivotal delivery yeah 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 and, and it just uh nicholas woodson, woodson? looks like nicholas woodson woodson, woodson? 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 yeah that anyway. looks like who it is mm -hmm. um yeah i mean it wasn't yeah, it was just it was just noticeably noticeably good acting job. So it was so well done because mm -hmm. he brought a lot of strength and power. He wasn't someone who was proselytizing from a place of aloof and everyone should just have this. It's mm -hmm. like we've all had some things that we don't want to admit. And right. he really lived that out right. enough to make you feel like maybe he could engage this purely evil because right, <laughs> I guess right, Sauron's right. not purely evil. I think Morgoth even had an origin of being in harmony with the things that the creator was wanting okay so even his boss wasn't purely evil mm -hmm, until mm -hmm. a certain time and then right, right, <laughs> you right, know right. I, I i don't think i think what i'm saying mm. what we were shown in this and forget about whatever tolkien purists might want there to be yeah what we were shown is sauron was thinking about it 
he was thinking about yeah, we whether saw a or not. tear coming out of his eye and stuff like that. So yeah. Yeah. So it's like, you yeah. know, you meant to think, I guess that and he's thinking about this, his yeah. place in all this. Yeah. He sort of wants to be good, but he can't. You know what? Just a, what occurred to me? He's saying to the orcs what he feels. Like mm -hmm. this is the only place for him. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's what just occurred to me. Okay. There's a tear, and it's probably not even for the people he wants to control or the entities, the orcs, the creatures he wants to control. Mm -hmm. It's for him. Right. That he feels like he doesn't belong yeah, other places. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I think it is good to have those layers. I find it gripping just to talk about and see sure. characters living through good, evil, big decisions, right. sacrifice. So mm -hmm. you put up Elrond, sacrifice in terms of these orcs attacking Sauron. <laughs> you know, they're willing to, they're willing to, sacrifice, to die absolutely. to take him down right. because he certainly doesn't care about anybody, it mm -hmm. seems. Mm -hmm. And they can see it. They know it. Right, he's right, he's right. pumping them up with all the rah-rah and they're like, yeah, can you yeah. kill this guy? Hey, Adar, can you just can you kill mm -hmm. him? There's this big crown and it has all these spikes. And I think that's in the Tolkien lore that the crown that he wore was okay. used to like either fetter him or something. Mm, I, see, yeah. I, I don't know you guys again. I, I'm just, I just read stuff so I could know. Cause I was like, who's going to get killed? Cause I get so worried. I wasn't reading things to do anything, but have help with the names and also to know yeah. who's about to die. Cause I get too, so I'm pulled in. So we should be talking again about Lord of the Rings, the rings of rings of power. Uh, coming up because we're excited they haven't lost our interest we're peaked yeah, yeah so and inspired by and why should be back i mean we should be talking i don't know if that'll be mostly here or if i'll start to do segments we just want to keep you engaged and we're going to sort of change some things up so we can offer some more things if we find that there's a way to get you guys engaged more <laughs> with us and let us know if there are other things that you want us to check out right now we're planning on keeping up with the rings of power excuse me and other things on Amazon, probably leaning more towards movies in general. But let us know what you think we should be watching, and we will share uh, what we've been inspired by and why. <laughs> <laughs> All right, y'all. I guess I couldn't think of any. I was trying for a while to think of some more about sacrifice, and yeah. I couldn't really think of. Well, I mean, it seems like you know everybody is sacrificing something you know because there's all this struggle and you know nobody's just getting everything they want so um yeah i mean i think that there are other places in some of the stories that are around this mm -hmm. that definitely lean on sacrifice i'm just thinking about this episode in particular like I mean, you mentioned yeah i mean well yeah i mean in just in El general i guess and, elrond you mentioned elrond right right and then i was thinking about the orcs who were like orcs yeah you know, you know they, stepping they, up even though they know he's yeah. so powerful the guy to go down. the guy leading the orcs is sort of you know sacrificing some orcs for all this battle stuff because you know he knows they're gonna yeah of them are gonna die so um and he you know he thinks of them as his children so it's like you know well, there's the shorter term sacrifice for his larger end when Sauron is letting himself be tortured and do all this stuff to try to insinuate himself mm -hmm. in the spaces that he exactly. wants to be in. Exactly. So there's lots of short term sacrifice right, right, of right, comfort right. and right. safety so right. he can manipulate and right. like, ooh. Right. I mean, of course, most of this does not involve any spiritual connection, you know, uh, but it's just... Um, you know, in, in spirituality, that is a big part of it, sort of sacrificing your comfort and your complacency for, you know, getting something more, you know, getting going, going. Yeah, beyond. we saw another instance of sacrifice when another Harfoot joined Nori and the stranger. Right, there you go. The yep. poppy, I think. Mm -hmm, I think mm -hmm. that was the other character, but. Right. Um, so so that was in this episode because right, i think a lot right, of the right. sacrifices happened to set us up for this where people were like okay right, uh, right. galadriel's like i'm not gonna go right. to valar i'm gonna sacrifice my whole like being in a wonderful yeah. cushy existence right, right, right. to fight this fight absolutely so but that that was previous season and right. you know they got us to a great place right and off we go but right. so y'all i think i think we've had a good conversation i mean i think for me 
Yeah, Poppy. Poppy, right. proud yep. fellow, mm-hmm. played by Megan Richards. Mm-hmm. I love what the acting is in this. I mean, no one is taking a step wrong with the acting. I didn't actually mention much of the acting. Mm-hmm. You mentioned the gentleman who was playing right. the character who had this wonderful monologue about you can change. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And yeah. I, I love that. Mm-hmm. That was a great, mostly monologue. I don't think Stauron's character said that much back. It was yeah. a, a little bit of a conversation, but there was just so much that that gentleman right, got to right. relate. And that was great acting, but really the writing stood out for me. Yeah. But with uh, the stranger's character played by Daniel Wayman, mm-hmm. um, he says now more because right. he's sort of plugged into language and plugged right. into a bit of social reality and he's getting some more flashes of his memory back. So mm-hmm. he's popping out these little wise phrases, but there was just a lot in his face. Like he was really bringing you mm-hmm. so much mm-hmm. without saying much at all because he previously didn't have command of language as much as he has now. Right, right, so right. his acting remains riveting because they still right. give him a lot that's unsaid because he's trying to sort out mm-hmm. what in the world mm-hmm. is happening right. that he can do. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So absolutely. much here. Okay, I think we had a great conversation. Yeah. I think we, we got the connection to spirituality. Yep. Yep. Environmental stuff, you know, it's sort of interesting that we have this wet laying waste because of evil there's there's mm-hmm. some of that that goes on yeah 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 that when uh sauron dies his evil like explodes all over it's just like right. boom kills off a whole bunch of vegetation just boom, right, that's right, it. right um yeah there's that <laughs> there's that as far as an environmental connection right. yeah and like the, you know the orcs they you know wherever they go they just trash the environment is that yeah. really an orc thing or is that them being always in war because well, they're being sent out places? Right, right. Because I'm really loving this development of orcs. Like they are creatures who aren't always just wanting, they're, they're hungry. Right. They need a place to be. Right. They need right. food. Right, right. Like every other creature. Mm-hmm. And they're being tortured to be created. Right. And then sent on missions right. of destruction and right. then not being allowed to just be at peace. Mm-hmm. So mm-hmm. I, I think it's more it's a more function the, of the war. Battle. Yeah, yeah, yeah. More a function of their leadership. That's right. what I'm putting out right, there. Right, 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 right. But again, maybe I'm just not picking up as much as I should just from watching. Because mostly, like I said, I'm going off of mostly what is being shown to us. Yeah, yeah. Compassion for orcs. All right. It makes it more complicated. Orc I life, like it. Orc lives matter. I was going to try not to say that. Okay, all right. Well. But, you know, why should we be telling tales that are supposed to be teaching us things yeah. if we don't want there to be the right. more realistic Right. Right. Many layers mm-hmm. in a conflict. Yep. Just because I'm on this side doesn't mean the ones on that side are pure evil. Right. Even if they're doing something that harms what I'm trying to do, exactly. I may be frightening them with what I'm trying to so. Right. Yeah. But I think that's where fantasy can be a lot of fun is we enter into it with the rules established as opposed to real life where we know we're coming in and we have a bias based on the bodies we were born into, the cultures we're in. Right. Fascinating stuff. Okay, y'all. Take care. Bye. Oh, and also enjoy our conversations about some other fantasy series. We talked about Outer Range. Outer Range for sure, yeah. Wheel of Time may have been before we started Inspired by a while. Yeah. We should get back to that. Yeah, so yeah, yeah. check yeah. out our other conversations about fantasy that we've had on here. And uh, I'm looking forward to Wheel of Time coming back. Yeah. yeah. It's going to be a yeah. while, I think, right? All right, y'all. Take care. Bye. Bye.